Hey everyone, welcome back to Sweet Yellow House. Oh my gosh, it's been a minute. I worked so hard to get this video out because I was just not feeling it. So I did my best and this is what I came up with. So project one is just a little antique style frame that I um, had in my stash and I just wanted to make a little something. I have a collage type wall um, in my hallway and I just wanted to kind of fill some space with that so I thought I'd make something for myself. Nothing special, just something kind of pretty to kind of take up the space. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the uh, gilding wax, the gold here. I think it's empire gold and I'm going to go over that frame. Even though it's already gold, I didn't particularly, particularly like the gold color that it was. I just felt like it was a little washed out. So I just decided that I would go over it and um, shine it back up just a smidge. Going over it, I think it did. Uh, I think it did a good job. Uh, it kind of made that frame stand out a little uh, more. I think that it was kind of getting washed out, even with nothing in it. It looked washed out, so um, I just decided that it was time to give it a little life of its own again. So after going over that, like I said, I let it sit for a little bit and let that wax cure on there, and then I moved on to filling the frame. So I had this little canvas board that I got from Michaels. I believe uh, it was just like a one-off that um, I purchased from their clearance section. I did get this decoupage paper. I believe I purchased that from Jamie Ray Vintage and I'm sorry but I don't know what the name of it is. I'm sure if you go to her website it's still there but I decided on the picture that I wanted and I just cut that out and made sure that um, I cut my line straight because as I've said before I can't cut a straight line to save my life so it just seems like I'm always trimming and trimming and trimming so I kind of put that up there I wasn't sure exactly which direction it went in so I just made the call and decided um, that it was going to go this way so I measured it and then made lines with my ruler and stuff like that um, so I knew exactly where I was going to put that I grabbed my liquid patina and I am going to use that to decoupage that print onto my canvas I am not being very careful with this as you can see I'm being quite um, sloppy with it I think because in my mind I want it to look vintage and I don't want to have to like go back and mess it all up once I've worked so hard to get it uh, perfect I guess so I just kind of haphazardly did some stuff to this and put it down it made sure that it was down well but I didn't I wasn't really careful with the whole thing so once I got that down and covered and decoupage on there I I let that dry for probably about 20 minutes and then I grabbed my barn quilt DIY cottage um, color and I am going to paint the frame around this the part that doesn't have any print so you want to make sure that you stir that paint up really well I don't normally stir it up uh, before I open it I'll um, shake it really well and stuff and that seems to work for me so I'm going to do several coats on this because you can see that it is very uh, transparent so but once you get the first coat on and dry that then uh, the second coat is is a lot darker and you can't um, see all of that so I get the first coat on I'm going to use my embossing gun to dry that quickly and then I'm going to go back with the second coat and uh, put that down and then again dry it off uh, dry that up with my embossing gun I'm not really worrying about my lines being straight on this and I'm just kind of trying to make the the line uh, as best I can doing it freehand I'm going I'm going to cover that up so that's why I'm not particularly being that careful with it so I think this probably took me about three coats or so to get it um, to the point where I I was happy with it and it had a solid color and you couldn't see any kind of streaking on it
once I got that covered exactly, you know, got that red paint to where you couldn't see through it, um, I just made sure that everything was really uh, dry on there because I'm, I am going to go over the whole thing with some Mod Podge and I didn't want that paint to streak over my print. So I grab my gloss Mod Podge and what I'm trying to do is make this look like an actual little portrait, um, hand painted type portrait. So I'm going to go over the whole thing uh, with this Mod Podge and what you want to do with that is that you just kind of want to pounce on there and kind of move in the direction of what you think the strokes would look like if it was actually painted. So at first I decided that I was just going to do around the print or the de uh, decoupage paper but then I decided that I was going to cover the whole thing just to kind of seal everything in and make everything look really uh, cohesive and um, I just wanted it to just everything to be kind of sealed in there together so I'm drying that with my embossing gun and I am going to then grab some this is like a velvet uh, piece of ribbon and with this ribbon I'm gonna glue it down and cover up that messy border that I did there myself so I'm gonna put it in the frame uh, before I start doing that because I don't want to pull it out and then you know have to uh, it rips the the um, ribbon off of there so that's why I went ahead and put it in the frame and now I'm gonna start gluing that that ribbon down to cover that messy border. This is some velvet ribbon. Um, I think I bought it off of Amazon and it came like with like 40 different little uh, pieces of velvet ribbon that are all different colors. So it's a really good buy. I If I can find it, I'll link it in the description box. But I, I think this is like one of the last pieces that I bought probably about two years ago. So I'm just mitering those corners to make sure that everything looks nice and neat as much as I can and um, gluing that down. Been using quite a bit of different uh, types of glues just to see uh, if I find something that I like better than my usual uh, that I use. So. That's why you see a bunch of different glues in my hand. So I'm going to grab my IOD uh, stone gray ink. And then I got this little, little stamp uh, of texture stamp off of uh, Amazon, I believe. And it's just a little cheapy that I think I paid $2 for. And that's really why I don't mind cutting it up. I cut it up because I wanted a smaller piece to work with. I didn't want to have to um, kind of maneuver a uh, you know, a really large piece. And since it was so cheap, it didn't bother me to have to do that. So I just stamped some crackle on there um, just to kind of give it a little bit more vintage look. And I'm going to cover the edges of that ribbon where it's mitered together with some um, really uh, pretty rhinestones. These are actually Swarovski crystals. And I have a bunch of these left over that I used to use when I did nails. So there's no better way to use that kind of stuff up. Um, so add them into your crafts that you're doing. So using this glue again, I just put two on each corner. And it's just like I said, to hide that those cut corners and to kind of give it a little bit more bling. I set that aside to dry. And once it's done, then here's how it turned out. This is not perfect by any means, I know that, but uh, everything else on my collage wall is very vintage, so I didn't want something so brand new and crisp on there. It would just then look out of place. It is July 3rd, and I don't know if you could hear all the fireworks going on <laughs> outside, but if you can, I apologize for that, but there's no way for me to stop that. So project two, you've seen me work on a piece like this before a while back. So when I purchased them, I actually got two with it. So uh, this is the second one. I'm going to go ahead and start removing all the things on there that I didn't want, like the cord. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, finials on the ends of that. 
I'm going to wipe it down and I'm going to grab my Tuscan Red in the Folk Art um, Chalk Home Decor paint. Uh, and my first mistake here is that obviously you can see that that paint is super purple. It's not supposed to be like that. So um, that just means I did not shake that or stir that up well enough. So once I got it all stirred up, uh, the color that you see is obviously um, there now. So drying that with my embossing gun once I got all that done. This is a new product. It's the Golden Crackle Paste, and this is what it's supposed to look like. So I grabbed it, and I did not put a thick enough uh, coating down on this for it to crackle. It did crackle in some spaces. My uh, my my idea was I wasn't looking for it to crackle. I was just really looking to give it texture. So it crackling was not my um, really intent. It's just what I had on hand to kind of spread around some texture on this. So I grabbed a palette knife and I'm just skimming over it, kind of giving it some texture here and there um, and making sure that I have everything covered. I don't have any really, like I said, thick globs on there. Uh, there I did get a little bit of crackle, but not as much as I um, would have if I would have put a thicker coat on it. So I'm just going to cover all of this, go over the edges, making sure that I'm happy with uh, as much texture as I got. And once I get there, I'm going to go over it with my embossing gun and trying to quickly dry that. Once I have that all dried, I'm going to grab my weathered wood and the DIY paint. And with this, <clears throat> I'm going to water some down and just kind of make like a wash. So... I will confess now that I, at this point, was not really sure what the heck I was doing. I was just kind of going and just to see where my brain would take me. So there's a couple of steps like this one that I did that I didn't necessarily need to do. But at the time that I was doing it, I wasn't quite sure what direction. And, you know, sometimes you start working and your brain uh, starts taking over and then the ideas come and that's kind of what this was like. So... I got some black in the same uh, folk art chalk paint and again I'm going to add a little bit of water to this because it was a little thick for my taste and I'm going to do a coat over this as well um, and it's you know it's more opaque it's it's to cover it and my idea was that the reason why I put that wash before this coat is because I thought that that was going to be my last coat and I didn't want it to look so stark but then I had a different idea and went left altogether so I got this uh this layer down and dried it with my embossing gun and now what I'm going to do is get my liquid patina and I'm going to seal all of this in the reason that I'm putting liquid patina down is because I want to put a transfer on this and I'm not quite sure that I would be able to get that transfer to stick to this paint or not. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and do a coat of the liquid patina. That way I'm guaranteeing myself that I'm going to have success with that. I grabbed my IOD, uh, I don't even want to know, Redoubt 2. I, I don't know how to pronounce that, but you see it here. Uh, and I'm going to grab a couple of things from there that I want to put on to this. So I ended up going with just one main uh, uh, flower with this. I didn't, I wasn't going to, I didn't want to cover the whole thing. I just wanted something simplistic, but also enough to handle this big board. I didn't want it to look small on this so I picked out the one that I wanted trimmed it out and I proceeded to uh, put that down I am using this stylus because of all the texture that is on this board I just thought by using a you know the little wood piece that it wasn't going to give me enough kind of uh, I don't know like I wasn't going to be able to get in all those nicks and crannies with that tool. So using a stylus kind of worked out better for me. So after I got all of that down, I'm taking some sandpaper and a couple of different grits and I'm just going to rough this up. 
You can see now that that white plaster is coming through. Um, so there was really no reason to do that first wash on it. But, you know, sometimes you head in a direction with something and then a whole nother thing happens in your head and you go in a completely different direction. And that's kind of what happened to me here. <laughs> Once I have that sanded where I liked it and I wiped all the extra dust off there, I set that aside and I'm going to get the amazing uh, casting resin. And this is an actually an old IOD mold. It's vintage art deco mold object label number one. And I believe this came in a set, but I only have this one that I purchased from somewhere. I don't remember. I think it was off eBay maybe. Um, so I'm going to use this. And in before I mix my casting resin together, I am first going to coat my mold with this gold mica. And you, you've seen me before. You just take a soft brush, dip into your mica, and then go around inside that mold. And what this is going to do is once you pour that resin in there, instead of having to paint uh, the mold, once you get it out, it will already be colored with um the color that you put in there and you can use anything any black you know any kind of i have so many colors of micas and i can do anything you know so sometimes it's a lot easier to do it this way versus trying to mold it and then take it out and painting and especially if you have a really detailed mold then we all know what a pain that can be sometimes so this is a really easy way to get that done, colored and, you know, set at one time. Um, and it, it actually looks really pretty. It looks very vintage. So I'm going to grab a piece of label from that transfer or the, um, the transfer that I had and just put it on this label that I decided to use. Grabbing the black wax in DIY, I am going to go over this whole thing to seal in that transfer that's on there, but also give this label an antique look. So I just brush it on and then grab a little soft cloth and I'm pushing that wax down into the details and uh, just wiping off any excess. I grab my Jolie Clear uh, wax and what I'm going to do is mix that with my bare decorative finish wax. And this is a dark wax. And I'm going to mix these two together because I, I don't want that full dark wax going onto my project. I'm just trying to give it a little, take, take that brightness off of that white that's showing through from when I sanded and uh, take that down a little bit. So I don't want a really harsh dark wax on there i just want to kind of bring that white back a little bit and you can see here i'm just going over the whole thing even my um the transfer that's on there and everything else so once i get that completely covered i'm waiting five minutes and then i'm going to go back and buff that all in i grabbed this g g J and B weld uh, because I see uh, some um, crafters use it. Honestly, it works well, but the smell on there is just too much for me to handle. So I'm not sure if I'll be using that again. So this is how um, this project came out. I really love the texture of it uh, and the way that it kind of, uh, from sanding it, the... Um, antiquing of it and just and then with that gold label it just sets it off i i was really happy with this so project three is this pail that you know everybody has seen this you put ice in it and you use it for drinks you know when you're having a barbecue or whatever i have plenty of these and um i'm just looking to maybe spruce them up a little bit so the first thing i did was I threw this at my husband and told him to take it outside and paint it black because it's too hot out there. I'm not going. So once he did two coats on that, we let it dry, brought it inside, and then I grabbed my DIY. Uh, I think this is mint something. It's vintage mint. 
I want to say, or yeah, vintage mint. And I'm going to do a couple of coats on this. I was really trying hard to use a bigger brush. Uh, this is a really lightweight brush, but um, it's hard for me to control. So I wasn't as uh, careful with it as I wanted to. Um, so I was just trying to see what I could do with a bigger brush. And I'm, I think I'm going to go back to my smaller brushes and so once I did all my coats on that and got everything covered and, and opaque, I grabbed this. These are transfers that I got from Dixie Belle. I got these some time ago. I'm assuming they're still available. I, I'm not sure. I think I've had these probably for five or six months. Uh, so I wanted to do kind of like a garden thing theme with this drink bucket. So I grabbed this and I'm just going to start cutting out those elements uh, piece by piece because I kind of want to, my thought is I want to scatter them and make it just look like there's, you know, um, a garden all the way around it. So I'm going to, I'm going to top that off with some butterflies and birds. I think that has some bees in it. And um, so just kind of using all of those pieces and scattering them around making sure that everything is looks lush and full and I believe that I gathered uh, some other transfers from IOD and it was from the painterly florals so I grabbed some uh, roses from there and some lavender from there and you'll see that coming up so this is very simple. You just get it, get your transfers and start putting those on where you think that you'd like to see them. And I'm going to go all the way around this bucket, just putting these transfers down, these flowers, uh, using odd and end. This is a this is a really great project to use all your little odd and end things, all your little leaves that you have one leaf left over or you have pieces of flowers and things like that. This is a great project for that. This was a little time time consuming, but I believe it's well worth it. And here you see the painterly florals and I just had odd and end things that I hadn't used. And so I just gathered up what I thought would look good with the other transfer and just started laying that stuff down. And that's how that came out. I was thinking that I might put like some little legs on here, like riser legs and use it for a planter or even still a drink bucket. I did want to take this outside and give it a coat, a couple of clear matte coats just to protect it. Um, I didn't get that done because uh, it's been very hot outside. Uh, we're working in the 110s, 113s, and um, your girl is just not trying to do that. So, but I will once it get once it gets comfortable, I will take it out. So, my fourth project is this frame, and I have two of these, but I'm only going to be working with one today. And they are very pretty frames, uh, but I had a different idea, a uh, direction that I wanted to go. So I'm going to do my favorite technique with this and make it look like wood. So I'm going to grab my uh, weathered wood in the DIY and do a couple of coats of that uh, right off the bat. I am adding a little bit of water to this just because it was a little thick for me and just kind of uh, thinning that out just a little bit. I think it takes me about three coats or so on here um, and I'm drying each coat uh, with my embossing gun and just making sure that I have full coverage. Ooh. 
once I have that all done, cleaned up and dried, I grab my liquid patina in dark and decrepit and I'm going to do a two coats, I believe, over over that. Once I have that liquid patina dried up, I'm going to grab my DIY wax in the dark and I'm going to do a coat over all of that uh, dark area outside. I'm going to try really hard not to cover that gold inner part, but just doing a really nice coat on the outside. Just really burnishing that wax in there. The more you kind of put that in there, I'm doing it in swirls and um, making sure that you have a good coat on there. And then I let it sit for five minutes or so and let that wax cure on there, grabbing a soft cloth. And then you're able to kind of burnish that wax out and give it a, just a really nice buttery looking uh you know uh, look to that so I grab my IOD a uh, lover of flowers in um, and I'm just looking for a something I want to put in this frame the background that I have on here is just some paper like some card stock paper that I had and I really like the look of that so I decided on what I wanted to put on there and the first thing I'm going to do is actually get the label I think from this particular flower and use one of those molds I made and put it uh, on here. Uh, this again I went through you can see I have another mold up in the corner there that I was thinking about using but I just I, I it was a struggle for me I don't know why it was just like I was just having issues like normally I get into a project and and I can just let it flow and come out and, but these projects I'm not sure what happened I just maybe my mind was not there um, I have been spending a lot of time in my kitchen I've been cooking and kind of enjoying my kitchen a lot more over the last couple of weeks so even though I was crafting which I love to do my mind was kind of in a different room um, wanting to do stuff in there I really love um, summer cooking you know or making you know ice cream and things like that and that's kind of where I wanted to be so I don't know why but these projects were just uh, hard for me to get from my brain out you know into realization so but that's how this turned out it's simple but the uh, the the frame turned out really well and I really like the label uh, how that looks uh, uh, on that dark uh, wood color Project five is this frame here that I believe I had this hung up somewhere and it fell and so the glass broke out of it. So I'm just going to be very careful and start removing the backing on that and get that broken glass out of there. I got this frame from the Goodwill some time ago. I did put the pictures that are in there um, in there myself. It had different different pictures. I don't remember what they were, but uh, this has like a burlap type of um, fabric on the matting area, which I really like. I don't want to remove that. So I'm going to keep that on there. I'm just removing the prints that are in there and that way so I can go into, you know, I like to pull everything off and then start building from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the, my gilding wax that I really love. And I'm just going to use that to go over that brown, I mean the orange, um, matting that inside matting so I want to cover that whole thing with the gold this wax 
holds really well on paper I'm I, or any kind of like card stock or anything like that. So that's why you see a lot. I will use this wax a lot when I'm trying to cover up, you know, uh, matting or paper or anything like that because it just does really well. It has a really nice shine to it. So once I have that covered up, I'm going to set that aside and I'm going going to return to the frame I'm going to grab golden ticket ticket liquid patina from DIY and I don't use this too much uh, it's a little thin for me but I didn't want a really thick paint because this frame looks like bamboo and I wanted to make sure that I kept all of that feature all of that texture so that you know it's bamboo so I do a really thin coat uh, on that and then I just go back with my embossing gun and it dries very quickly. I think uh, two coats is all I did uh, because that frame was, you know, a, a really light color brown. So it wasn't like I had to cover up anything, uh, you know, really dark and strong on there. So I like the way that this came out uh, with the gold over that frame. Um, it just kind of was looking a little blah and the gold on there just kind of brought everything together. So this is how it looks with the mat back in there, but we're not done yet. Uh, I grabbed the IOD Joy D Roses, I think that's how you pronounce it. And these pieces that I'm showing you here are odd and end pieces from a different project that I didn't use. So I am looking through them and I'm like, I'm going to make this work. So I just kind of start laying that out to see where I can put um, them that they'll look nice. My thought, my first thought was that I would cover the whole matting with this, the whole part of the burlap with this. Uh, but then as I started kind of working through it, I didn't really want to cover all of it up because it had really nice texture. It had, you know, a good color. Um, and it looked just, it's kind of like you have that gold and you have that rustic of the burlap and then you have these beautiful flowers and it's just a really great combination. So once I got those down kind of where I wanted them and I felt they would look good, I start to put those down and burnish those uh, with my carrier sheet. I am looking at maybe uh, I'm contemplating opening or having another channel to do more of my home stuff that I like to do, uh, decorating and cooking and things. I don't do very well on this channel um, because people want to see crafts, obviously. So I was just thinking that I would start another channel just dedicated to those other passions that I have and then leave this channel for you know the the craft stuff so my idea is that I would do a lot of decorating with the things that I make so you can kind of see how I'm using uh, the projects that I make as you know and I love decorating I love cooking and uh, you know spending time gardening and all of those things of course it's been a little bit more difficult for me lately but I, I'm getting there uh, my my um, my will is far more uh, stronger than my um, give up <laughs> I'm not gonna give up so uh, let me know what you think if if you think that that would be a good idea because it just seems like when I put those kind of videos on this channel it they just don't do well so I'm you know and that way if people decide that they want to go over to the other channel and look at those uh, things that I'm doing over there they have the option to do that so let me know what you think that's just kind of what I'm contemplating uh, and if I do that it probably won't be until August uh, about August 1st is when I'm thinking that I'll I'll go ahead and start the other channel so let me know your thoughts on that I'm just kind of curious so let's get back to our projects I have gotten three molds I got uh, one from IOD and this one is what is it it's birdsong this other one that I'm in now, I, it's Blackwood Manor, and that's from uh, Redesigned by Prima. And this other one is Nature 
Academia collection, and that's also by Redesign by Prima. Again, I put in the mica into the molds that I think I'm going to use, and using my amazing casting resin, uh, I'm going to mix up a batch and stir that up and pour those into the, the molds that I want to use. I had some resin left over, so I just went ahead and poured them into some of the other uh, molds there. So, but that's how these turned out. Uh, like I said, I really love the fact that I could just put that mica in there, and then I don't have to worry about trying to paint it and letting that dry and you know fumbling it around. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to make some mats for those molds to go on. So I grabbed some really heavy duty cardboard and I'm going to cut those into, I believe it's like four by four squares. So I'm just using my paper cutter to do that and then a little knife um, cutter to go all the way through that thick cardboard. I grabbed some black mat paper, cardstock paper, and I'm cutting those into 4x4 four four as well. I'm going to glue those together uh, with this art glitter glue, which is wonderful. I really love it. It just seems like it's super strong and, and it kind of sets up really fast. So I'm just using that to glue these two pieces of paper together, or cardstock and um, the cardboard piece. The reason that I'm doing that is actually because if I were to just put paper, I don't think that, that uh, those molds would have anything like really substantial to hold on to and they might actually start to sag or rip that paper. So that's why I decided to put that heavier cardboard on the back of that. I'm going to go around the openings of the frame and or the smaller frames and use that glue again and glue down those pieces of matting that I made. Once I have those glued down, I just want to make sure that they're super secure. I don't want the heaviness of those molds to kind of damage or pull away from that. Uh, so I'm using this uh, paper tape and just gluing those mats down for just extra security. So I go all the way around that. I'm going to pop the backing back on and make sure that I have that on there really secure and turn it over. And now I'm going to glue those molds onto one to into each of those openings. So once I kind of get an idea of how I want those situated, um, I'm going to then glue those down using the same art glitter uh, glue. I have to say, out of all the projects that I struggled through on this, uh, this was my favorite. I really just love the gold and the roughness of that burlap on that mat and then the beautiful flowers on it. It's just such a contrast, but just, I just, this is probably my favorite look. Um, so that's how that turned out. You can see my backdrop is different. And again, because it's too hot for me to go outside and try to focus on taking pictures. So I just decided that I would just do all my pictures inside until it cools off just enough for me to go out there so I don't lose my mind. <laughs> from the heat because you know once you kind of get in that stressful position at least for me I just can't think so that's how that turned out I really love um, how this uh, how all of these projects were but this is my favorite so thank you so much for watching I appreciate you spending your time with me let me know which project you love the best and also let me know uh, what you think about having the other channel bye for now